The skull base has many openings, or foramina, that transmit cranial nerves, arteries, veins, and other structures. You'll likely encounter questions on the foramina and their corresponding structures, so let's review them here at the base of Skull Mountain. The skull base has three major depressions, the anterior cranial fossa, middle cranial fossa, and posterior cranial fossa. We'll use these craters to represent each of the fossae. And just a heads up, we'll move from left to right, starting at the front of the skull base and working our way to the back. The anterior cranial fossa is denoted here by the crater on the very left. The anterior fossa accommodates the frontal lobes of the brain and is composed of the frontal, ethmoid, and sphenoid bones. The anterior fossa contains the cribriform plate, which transmits cranial nerve 1. So here we have Odin, with his huge schnoz to remind you of the olfactory nerve. That's CN1, as you can probably tell by his one-shaped spear. The cribriform plate can be remembered by this crib and the tiny holes in the crater. Next is the middle cranial fossa. This will be the middle crater. The middle fossa houses the pituitary gland and temporal lobes of the brain. It's composed of the sphenoid and temporal bones. So let's go over the major openings in the middle cranial fossa, starting with the optic canal. The optic canal transmits cranial nerve 2, the optic nerve, and the ophthalmic artery into the orbital cavity. So we'll have this grand canal connecting the brain-shaped Viking temple and middle crater represent the optic canal. The owl, with its big eyes, will remind you of the optic nerve. See how its legs look like a Roman numeral 2? That's because the optic nerve is cranial nerve 2. And finally, the owl is holding a red snake with bulging eyes to remind you that the optic nerve travels with the ophthalmic artery. The next opening is the superior orbital fissure, denoted here by this large hole right above the Viking eye carving. Cranial nerves 3, 4, 6, and the ophthalmic nerve, the first branch of cranial nerve 5, pass through the superior orbital fissure to enter into the orbital cavity. We've got our three-eyed observer for cranial nerve 3, Thor for the trochlear or fourth cranial nerve, and the goddess of six-pack abs and death for cranial nerve 6. Also, here's the one-eyed head of our trigem serpent to remind you of the ophthalmic branch of V1. Okay, so uh, let's move away before that one eye catches me off guard. <laughs> Excuse me.